The most rewarding part of my role as the country community's rabbi is to see the satisfaction on people's faces when I arrive with a little parcel, as well as to meet people who are proud under all circumstances to remain Jewish when it comes to their keeping their Jewish faith. I don't keep it a secret. I say, Rabbi, my rabbi is coming. Your rabbi? My rabbi, yes, my rabbi, the country rabbi. Oh, we've got a special rabbi. I said, no, what's a special rabbi, but Rabbi Sulbaba is special to us people who are alone in the country. This week, my route takes me to the Free State, then on to the Eastern Cape. After nine years as South Africa's only traveling rabbi, I know all the highways and byways. I pass the old Helbron Synagogue, symbol of a bygone era. At the cemetery in Sienekal, I will say a memorial prayer for some of the first Jews to settle in the Free State. Once, there was hardly a village or railway siding without a Jewish presence. Now, most of those 1,300 places have dwindled or disappeared. Gone, but not forgotten. Most of the remaining Jews can no longer support a resident rabbi. So I'm their spiritual leader and linked to Judaism. I minister to over 3,000 Jewish people right across the land and even deep into Africa. The Fermans are among them. Their general dealer store in Markwood is still a landmark, but now it's closed. And Yvonne and Ronnie are the last remaining Jews in the town. The Fermer's daughter was married in Australia just a short time ago, but the old couple couldn't make the long journey, so I've come down to help them celebrate this special occasion. You cannot visualize what it means to us being so isolated from the rest of our Jewish friends and so But the man is indescribable. He is just wonderful. Oh, it does seem as beyond his duty, I would say. And uh, he keeps us in touch with what's going on in the Jewry in South Africa. And uh, I mean, what people take for granted in the cities, we're very happy to receive. Not everybody thinks so. Absolutely, your regular kosher delivery of meat. <laughs> for the past few years, I've been bringing the Fermans their kosher meat from Johannesburg because there are no longer any kosher butcheries in the region. Well, I personally was born here, in Marquardt. I went to school here and matriculated. My father came from Lithuania. My mother came from Latvia. And uh, my dad must have come to South Africa in the early 1910s or just before that. And they heard of this little village being opened here. No water, no electricity, no sanitation. And they decided this is a place for them to come and make, uh, make do. My father was a smouse, originally. The Fermers closed shop last year, after 60 years. They made a home video showing Ronnie at his best, behind his beloved counter. They call this the Yiddish piano, you know? There was a time when we had plus minus 25 Jewish families here. We had Jewish lawyer, we had a Jewish doctors here, we had a Jewish dentist here, we had many shopkeepers here, and uh, mostly shopkeepers, a few farmers. And uh, during the years, most people decided to leave the small towns. There was not much future for them. There are no Jews here. We're the only Jewish couple in quite an area here. And um, we're invited out and we belong to the societies. You have to. 
When you live with a community or in a community, you've got to be part of the community. So there's my Jewish, here's your Jewish calendar. Uh, grace and dark. Yeah, Thank you Jewish very newspapers. much. Thank you. And a newsletter for Yontif. Thank, Thank you. you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say goodbye to the Furmans, knowing I'll soon be back. Now I face a long, hard drive across the Karoo. I had hoped to spend a late Sunday afternoon with three generations of the Jacobson family on their farm. But the younger ones are in a hurry to return to Bloemfontein for the school week ahead. So instead, we arrange a roadside rendezvous. Tell me, Jewishly, what do you manage to maintain in Bloemfontein? Do you get to the shul there ever? Um, not, not very often. No. You, come to, to, you come home for the weekends, that's yeah. fine. Um, it's difficult maintaining my identity as a Jew because um, I'm the only Jewish student at the moment at the, Orange, the University of the Orange Free State. And uh, we don't get to shul very often because we come home every weekend. And uh, it's far to go in between. And my father works on the farm, so he also doesn't have much time to drive up and down. Religious studies or our religious instruction. Before I leave, I remind the boys of the upcoming Jewish New Year and the importance of repentance at this time. You know that now is the month of Elul, the Jewish month before Rosh Hashanah, and we blow the shofar every day, except the day before Rosh Hashanah, to remind us to start doing re repentance, to do tshuva, and we blow it on Rosh Hashanah. So I'm going to now blow the uh, shofar for you, and if you can just listen to it. It will be a race against time to get to the Jacobsons' remote sheep farm before night falls. Five generations of Jacobsons have lived out here, keeping their faith, despite the isolation. I'm Gavin Spermitzpiss in July 2004. Okay. His birthday is the 15th of July. Okay. I've helped the other boys prepare for their bar mitzvahs. Now it's the turn of Gavin, the youngest son. Okay. We'll work out the Hebrew date. And then we'll have to take it from there to sell on a portion. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather came out to, to, to Philippopolis. He had a cousin here. And he smoked around. He, my cousin gave him a cart and horses. And he used to smoke around here. Philippopolis district, Springfield Day district, Bethulia district. The family saga is a familiar one. Like most Jews who settle in the Platteland, Leslie Jacobson's grandfather originally came from Lithuania. Over time, he managed to scrape enough money together to bring out the family left behind in Eastern Europe. In all, 13 Jacobson cousins eventually settled in the Philippolis district, though most have since left. In due course, the family prospered. Today, Leslie and Benjamin, father and son, are one of the largest sheep farmers in the Karoo and the only Jews. Look, I was born a Jew and I made a Jew. I'm not, I won't say I'm an Orthodox Jew, but uh, I still managed to, to, to remain. And then I'm, I'm respected whether I'm Jewish or not, not Jewish. There's no anti-Semitic in this district. Because my father, my late father, did more for the, for the community than all the Dutch reform ministers here. Religion is important to me. I'm a very spiritual person. And out here, with it being so quiet, you get in touch with your soul, that you're able to think and, and figure out exactly who you are. And you have a very personal relationship with, with God. So, you know, everything that happens, you sort of talk to him like he's a friend, almost impersonal in a way, but respectful. Jacobson's living out here, being the, almost the only Jews, in fact, the, they are the only Jews in the Karoo, in this area, it is imperative that they have a steady contact with a wider Jewish community. I'd like to consider that the country communities is one large community, even though they're dispersed. Uh, I put out a newsletter once a year, and they all feature in it, if it's a picture or an article or an event. And from that, they feel that they're part of a larger community. They don't need to be reminded that they're Jewish. They're very proud Jews. They are fifth generation farmers in this area. And uh, it's, it's really to be there for them and that they know that there is somebody out there for them.